in the 21st century, the only objective we have is don't die. Meet Brian Johnson, a 45-year-old tech entrepreneur from Utah who is biologically younger than most of the people watching this video. He has become the most measured person in human history to prove one thing, that death is not inevitable. Not only is he optimizing his health in every way possible, he's also providing all of this information for free. So in this video, you will find out ways to live longer. But before we get into how Brian Johnson plans to live forever, including his personalized exercise regime, a meticulously designed diet, hundreds of supplements, breakthrough therapies, a team of 30 doctors, and so much more. We need to discuss what led Brian on the path no human has ever chosen to take before. Brian's life was very different. At the age of 19, he became a Mormon missionary. This wasn't just a part of his life, it was his whole life. As he says himself, It's everything you are as a human. There was a period from Brian's mid-twenties to mid-thirties where he was building a startup so had little money, was raising three children and as a result of this wasn't sleeping well, was trying to leave Mormonism but that being extremely difficult due to his wife and whole community around him. All of this accumulated in a decade span of depression. It wasn't until his mid-thirties in 2013 where his life truly changed. Within the span of a year, he left the church, got a divorce, sold his startup to PayPal for $800 million and came out the other side of depression. It was at this moment Brian's brain started shifting from seeing the world in things he was told he can't do to now things he can do and he wanted to make a difference. That's a very brief summary of the path which led Brian to create Blueprint, the ultimate guide for human survival. The core principle of Blueprint is that data-driven decisions are always better than human opinions. It's an algorithm fed by results from tests, which takes care of health better than an individual would be able to. Everything in Brian's life is there because it's won a place through data. Blueprint will trial five to 10 new therapies per week, measure Brian's body markers before and after, and then decide if it's shown significant enough results to slow down Brian's aging. An important piece of context here is that you have two ages, your chronological age, which is what everyone knows about, but also your biological age. For example, you could be 25 in chronological age, but 20 biologically as you're super healthy. So essentially your biological age can progress by less than a year per year. Brian Johnson's biological age is progressing at 0.69 years per year. A bit hard to wrap your head around, but currently he is biologically aging slower than his chronological age. By slowing down your biological age, you increase the period of having a healthy functional body by delaying or avoiding the onset of chronic diseases. This is why, in terms of longevity, your chronological age doesn't really matter. Within two years of using Blueprint to dictate his life, despite being 45, Brian has slowed his pace of aging the equivalent of 31 years. His cardiovascular capacity is in the top 1.5% of 18 year olds. His sleep and recovery performance is in the top percent of all WHOOP users and many other biomarkers have drastically improved, helping to slow his pace of aging down. But now for the fun part, how does he do it and how can you do it also? Starting with exercise. And make sure to stick around until the end of the video because we will be answering the question, can you live forever? Brian exercises once per day for around 45 to 60 minutes, which may be less than some people are expecting. Whilst some longevity experts, such as Peter Atia, suggest the optimal amount is two hours per day, Brian takes a more conservative approach. Per week, Brian aims to be in zones two to four in terms of heart rate for four and a half hours, and in zone five for 90 to 150 minutes. His goals are to build muscle, maximize flexibility, and increase VO2 max. A higher VO2 max has shown to be a significant marker for longevity. During his sessions, he warms up with the sled for about three to five minutes. His workouts aim to target all areas of the body, including many exercises you'd expect to see, such as tricep extensions and bicep curls. In between each exercise, he tries to minimize rest time to make it an intense and efficient workout. There is also a key emphasis on flexibility. He incorporates some unique exercises, such as reverse Nordics, 
and the couch stretch and even posture correcting exercises. He then ends the training with some cardio for about 10 minutes. Brian made a full 20 minute video detailing his daily exercise routine, which I've linked below. He's well aware that there are people who are fitter, stronger and are better at exercising than he is, but his workouts are designed specifically for longevity, not to become an athlete or a bodybuilder. In the words of Brian Johnson, every single calorie he consumes has had to fight for its place. So each of the following meals are there because they allow him to meet his daily calorie target of 2,250, whilst providing his body with as much nutrients as possible. To kickstart the day, he consumes a drink called the Green Giant. It includes spermidine, aminos, creatine, collagen peptides, cocoa flavonoids, and one teaspoon of cinnamon. According to Steve Aoki, That's really good. <laughs> at this point, Brian consumes some of his many daily supplements, which we'll come back to later. His second meal of the day is the super veggie, which comes in two forms, normally prepared and then pureed. This is followed by a nutty pudding and then a varied third meal. All of this information, including how you can make these meals yourself, are available on Brian's website, linked below. There are three important things to know about Brian's diet. The first is that he's constantly in a calorie deficit. Whilst there are potentially longevity benefits to a calorie deficit, it does suppress testosterone levels, so Brian has to supplement this with patches, so it may not be a great idea for everybody. The second is that his diet is completely plant-based. The science is quite inconclusive whether eating meat is good or bad for extending lifespan, so at the minute, this is more of a choice as opposed to being necessary. The third is that he eats in a very short and very early window. He consumes his first meal at around 7am and is usually finished eating by 11am. 11am. Essentially, this means Brian fasts for about 20 hours a day. Some longevity experts, such as David Sinclair, believe fasting is one of the best things we can do to live longer, as it allows your body a chance to heal itself. But this isn't Brian's main agenda, with his relatively abnormal eating window. It's actually because of sleep, which we will discuss now. Sleep is an incredibly important part of a healthy lifestyle. In fact, Sleep, I would argue, is the single most effective thing that you can do to reset your brain and body health. And yet, it's estimated that over 30% of people on the entire planet don't get enough sleep. But quantity isn't enough on its own. Quality is also important, and there are many ways to maximize this, which Brian has become a bit of a pro at. He uses a band called Whoop to track his sleep which he achieved a perfect 100% score for six months, a score which most users may not even reach for one night. So how does he do it? As mentioned earlier, Brian has a pretty small food window, finishing at 11 a.m., meaning by the time he goes to sleep, he won't have eaten for nearly 10 hours. Food has to be broken down by the body, so eating late can have a pretty negative effect on how well and how deep you sleep. So because Brian eats super early, this isn't a problem for him. The following are some, but not all, of the steps Brian takes before bed. Again, he's made a full video on this which I'll link below, but here's some of the stuff it includes. He takes a melatonin supplement which increases sleep opportunity signals in the brain, heart rate variability therapy which emits an electronical current to the vagus nerve, a vibrating device called iTier 100 which aims to improve his tear duct fluid production, skull candy headphones for audio cardio, which is specific sounds attempting to improve his hearing as he has slight hair loss from shooting guns as a kid. Listening to fader waves, which there are many free videos to listen to on YouTube. Brian claims that the first time he trialed listening to fader waves, he had a guest round and it made them instantly tired. He has a skincare routine, which includes a CeraVe wash, multiple creams topped with a peptide serum, an oral care routine, which isn't limited to just brushing his teeth. He also water flosses and rinses his mouth with tea tree oil. Oral health is often an underlooked part of overall health. There are multiple studies showing the potential links that bad oral health can have on the brain, body, and heart. Specifically, gum disease from not flossing can be very detrimental and even lead to Alzheimer's. Brian has managed to reverse his oral health by 20 years and even has a lower plaque index than his 17-year-old son. He has apps such as Flux installed on his electronic devices which reduces blue light emissions and he also uses blue light blocking glasses. Then finally, at around 7pm before bed, he spends an hour with his son Talmadge where they read books, catch up on high school 
and talk about the future. He says this is one of the best hours of his day. The bedroom itself is a very controlled environment. It's permanently blacked out. The mattress is temperature controlled and is made by a company called 8sleep. He has grounded sheets which potentially have anti-inflammatory effects. There are two filters to maintain excellent air quality. And finally, his memory foam pillow has a ridge for his neck. On top of all this, Brian never touches alcohol, of which just one glass of wine can disrupt sleep quality greatly. For people looking to improve their sleep, the most important thing is routine. Whilst all the other things listed help, the main takeaway is that Brian does all of these things before bed every day. Whilst he's carrying them out, his body and mind is expecting to sleep soon, which helps him fall asleep quickly and deeply. He goes to bed at the same time every night, but wakes up naturally whenever his body does so, which is usually between 4.30 to 6am. Whilst consuming his food, Brian consumes 111 supplements every day. That's right, 111. These come at a cost of around $11 per day. The exact amount can vary, as with everything else in Brian's life. If the supplements are not helping towards his goal, then they get axed. He splits the consumption of them and has a team that helps to organise them into metal tins every two weeks. I'm not going to break down every supplement Brian takes, but he's made a video talking about a few in detail. Brian acknowledges that you don't need to take 100 supplements per day to be healthy, but he's trying to be at the frontier of age rejuvenation, so he's taking some more risks. There's a drug called rapamycin, which potentially has longevity aiding effects, but as the research isn't bulletproof or even evident in humans yet, people in their 20s and 30s may want to wait, but people in their 50s and 60s may be more risk averse as they don't have as much time to wait for clinical trials. Everything we've discussed so far can be used by anyone to improve their health and lifespan. There's quite a low barrier when you're trying to incorporate more exercise, better eating, quality sleep, or even supplements into your daily routine. There are some things that Brian is trying, however, which are not as easily available. Brian went pretty viral for one of the breakthrough therapies he trialed when he swapped plasma with his son. The reasoning behind this was due to a mouse study where the older mouse became clinically younger and receiving the younger plasma. People criticised him for a mountain of different reasons, with one being that it's cruel to put his 17-year-old son through such an experiment, when in reality, his son was excited at the prospect of potentially extending his father and grandfather's lifespan. Whilst he said the experiment was a great bonding experience for his family, unfortunately for him, it didn't have any noticeable effect, as you can see by this tweet and therefore he discontinued any further exchanges. Red light therapy is something Brian Johnson has also experimented with. He has a custom made rig at home, which he can stand in between. According to the Cleveland Clinical, red light therapy has shown promise in treating wrinkles, redness, acne, scars, and other signs of aging. What about a machine which is the equivalent of 20,000 sit-ups in 30 minutes? Well, Brian has one of them as well. One of the more affordable therapies Brian is trying is a light box in the morning to kickstart his circadian rhythm. This can be particularly useful for people who live in countries with less sunlight. Inside Brian's house, he also has a range of medical devices which can measure anything from his skin age to eye health to lung capacity. A team of 30 or so doctors are also a part of his life which help to take out and examine very frequent blood tests and MRI imaging to see how Brian's body changes when something new is implemented into blueprint. Evidently, most of these therapies are out of reach for most human beings, whether that be due to cost, accessibility or time, or even a combination of all three. But that doesn't mean Brian Johnson should be hated for trying them. At the end of the day, people don't like change, and if you eventually prove that death isn't inevitable, that changes what it means to be a human. So you can imagine Brian faces a lot of hate. I hope he gets hit by a bus. The thing on this though, I wonder what happens if a bus gets hit by me? Personally, I don't see how you can have any negative feelings towards a man who is dedicating his whole life in an attempt to find information which can better the health and lifespan of human beings. Also, none of the content is behind a paywall. Everything Blueprint does is on his website. He constantly tweets about how new experiments are going and he publishes videos on YouTube shown behind the scenes. 
Brian does handle the hate very well though, and he expects it, as most people throughout history who have had a truly original idea have faced backlash. This is why he calls himself Zero. Zeros, by definition, cannot be defined and are hard to imagine, exactly like immortality. Which means it's finally time to answer the question, can Blueprint work? Can you live forever? The first thing to get out of the way is that Blueprint has clearly improved Brian's health and lifespan compared to his prior lifestyle and would likely improve the health of most people watching this video. But is it going to make you live forever? The answer is probably not, but also who knows. Biologically, humans seem to be engineered to live to a maximum lifespan of around 120. And that's if you treat your body very well or win the gene lottery and avoid all major causes of death such as cancer and heart disease. Most people don't make it past 80. However, it's not all doom and gloom. There is a popular word in the longevity scene coined by Aubrey de Grey called longevity escape velocity. It's a point in the future where medical technology advances at such a rate that it can extend human lifespan for more than a year for each year that passes. So essentially, you don't need to live long enough for a magic pill to arrive which makes you live forever. You just need to live long enough that technology advancements outpace you. There are animals which have lived over 500 years, so biologically on this planet, it's possible to live longer than 120 years. But as of right now, we are no way near solving aging in humans. Even if reversing aging is proved in a singular cell in a lab, that could still be hundreds or thousands of years before it's proved in animal studies and then humans. But as Brian states, we've never had a better chance of living longer than we do now. Technology advances in an accelerated way. Think of the millions of years of humans without phones. Then the first basic phone popped up in 1876. It then took over 100 years for this chunky $4,000 phone, but then just a little over 20 for the iPhone. When the Wright brothers made their first flight in 1903, do you really think they'd have believed you if you said humans would be taking a rocket to the moon in just 66 years time? AI will also play a crucial role. It can already process data and recognize patterns at a rate far greater than humans can, and it's improving exponentially. Regardless of whether it happens or not, the quest for immortality raises many social, economic, and philosophical issues. If we could live forever, would it only be available to a select few billionaires? If we lived until the age of 500, would we be working until 400? Would living forever destroy what it means to be human? And finally, do you really want to live forever?